Hello, my name is Jalen Avila, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through the quick version of the VEXA score. Now, if you happen to not know, the VEXA score is the volume excess ultrasound score. Your probe of choice is going to be using either the curvilinear or the phased array transducer. I like the curvilinear transducer, and you're going to start out by looking at the IVC. If it is flat and collapsing, like we see over here, you don't do vexus. Whereas if you have a plump, dilated, not collapsing IVC, which is what we're seeing over here, this is a patient in whom the vexus can be utilized. Now the vexus score is going to include the IVC as kind of an entry into it. Then you're going to obtain a hepatic vein Doppler waveform, a portal vein Doppler waveform, and an intrarenal vein Doppler waveform. Now let's talk about the hepatic vein. This one's probably the easiest one to obtain in my opinion. These are going to be more thin walled and are going to be aligned the same axis as the IVC. So if you place a transducer with a probe marker facing up, you're going to see it in its long axis and it's going to be thin walled here. We don't see any hyperechoic walls relative to the portal vein, which we're seeing here that has thicker walls. You can use this view here, or you can use a more subcostal view as well. Here we can see the hepatic veins going into the IVC. I'm going to take a brief pause here just to let you know that all of our content is on the coreultrasound.com website. That is Ultrasound Podcast, 5 Minutes Sono, Ultrasound of the Week, Clip Bank, and we also have our courses page where we have the Core Ultrasound Fundamentals and Core Ultrasound Question Bank where you have 3,200 questions with feedback, including narrated videos explaining the question. Check it out and back to your video. We're going to place our pulse wave Doppler on that hepatic vein. It's a good idea to use color Doppler first to see which one's giving you the best signal as we're seeing here in this image and this image. And then you maneuver your pulse wave Doppler gate to be in the middle of that hepatic vein Doppler. Now over here in mild, we have an S wave and a D wave. The S wave is a higher amplitude than the D wave. This is actually normal, but we say mild because the IVC is already distended, so there is likely a component of it. So when you have a normal hepatic vein Doppler waveform, it's considered mild. When you have the D wave as a higher or equal amplitude to the S wave, that's moderate. And then when you start to see this sinusoidal pattern, that's when it's considered severe congestion. With the portal vein, this is going to be slightly different in morphology relative to your hepatic vein. Notice here that we have the hyperechoic walls here of the portal vein, and we have the transducer in a more transverse cut, and we're able to see the long axis of it. Um, this would be the portal veins, and we're going to do the same thing, throw some pulse wave Doppler on there and identify the waveform. Now, we can look for this waveform here, and the way that I think about it is if you basically see no significant variation in the amplitude, it's mild. If you see a little bit of waviness, it's moderate, and if you see a lot of waviness, it's severe. If you need actual numbers, it's less than 30% change in the peak and the trough. This is between 30 and 50% change, and this is greater than 50% change would put it in the severe category. The last component is looking at the renal vein Doppler waveform. We're going to get our best view of a kidney, and then after we get that good view of that kidney, we'll decrease the depth so that we are focused in on that kidney, we are going to put color flow Doppler. And we're going to look for an area out more in the periphery, out past the pyramids, which are these hypocoke things right here, where we see venous and arterial waveforms really close to each other. And we're going to place the Doppler gate right in that area and get a waveform. Now over here, we have our mild congestion. Now this is a normal waveform, but remember you already have the IVC that is plump, so there's already some congestions. That's why this is mild category, even though this is a normal waveform. Now what we're seeing here is we're seeing a combination of the arterial and the venous waveforms together. This is arterial, and then this negative deflection here, this little wavy, is 
the Venus waveform. Now, if we look over here in the moderate category, we're still seeing this arterial spike, but now the Venus waveform is biphasic. That puts it into the moderate risk category. And then when we start to see a sinusoidal pattern here, that's when we get into the severe congestion category. Now let's put all of that together to determine what the VEXA score is. So we're going to start off with a plump IVC. And if we look at all these three things and they're all either in the mild or the moderate category, that's going to be grade one. And then if we have one of the waveforms that's in the severe category, any one, we can have two milds and one severe, that is going to be considered grade two. And if we have two or more, anything more than one in the severe category, that's going to be a grade three VEXIS score. That's it for this video. I hope to hear from you soon and happy scanning.